Okay, so a couple of videos ago we defined the six trigonometric functions uh, of an acute angle theta. So the six trig functions in terms of right triangles, things like that. Uh, we defined those a couple of videos ago. And then in the last video we talked about some of the basic relationships between those trig functions called the uh, fundamental identities. So we talked about the reciprocal identities and the quotient identities. Uh, there's also the Pythagorean identities, which we want to do. Uh, we'll talk about these now. So, um, as you might have guessed, these are related to the Pythagorean theorem for right triangles. So, uh, these are actually really uh, pretty important. So there's three of them, and as long as you remember one of them, you can get the other two. Uh, and they're, they're all pretty important. So let's see uh, where they come from. So let's start with the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle here, so we'll zoom in a little bit. So remember the Pythagorean theorem says uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? So let's take this equation and divide both sides by c squared. So then we can split up the left-hand side into uh, two fractions, so that's a squared over c squared plus b squared over c squared. And then on the right-hand side, uh, c squared divided by c squared is just 1. Okay. Now what I want to do is uh, take this and rewrite it. So a squared over c squared, remember, that's just the same thing as a over c quantity squared b squared over c squared, that's b over c quantity squared. Okay. And then uh, 1 is still just 1. Okay, now um, a over c and b over c, what's special about those? What are we doing here? What's significant about those? Well, uh, let's come back up here. If theta is over here, and this is a, this is b, this is c, then remember, uh, what's the cosine of theta? The cosine of theta is a over c, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. The cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Um, and the sine of theta, sine of theta is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which is b over c. Well, that's exactly what we have here. Um, a over c, that's the cosine of theta. b over c, that's the sine of theta. So we can uh, replace a over c with the cosine of theta. Cosine of theta. Uh, make sure you keep these parentheses also. Uh, we'll explain why in a sec. And b over c is the sine of theta. Okay, so again, keep the parentheses here. Okay, now uh, before we continue on with this, I want to explain why we have to keep these parentheses. So a over c quantity squared is the same thing as cosine of theta quantity squared. So you want to be very, very, very careful uh, because cosine of theta quantity squared uh, that is not the same thing as cosine of theta squared like that, right? So when we tossed in the cosine of theta, you might have been tempted to uh, drop the parentheses because you're thinking, oh, well, cosine of theta, that's just one thing, so why do we need the parentheses? Uh, we need the parentheses because there's a difference between squaring the cosine and squaring theta. Okay? If you say cosine of theta squared, then that's the same thing as cosine of theta, or that's understood to mean cosine of theta squared. So this means square theta and then take the cosine. But this, which is what we want, means take the cosine and then square that. So this is first do the cosine, then you square. And this is first square and then do the cosine. So they're very different. Be very careful about that. Um, because this is kind of a mess, uh, there's sort of a shorthand notation. So let's actually, let's do this. Uh, so the cosine of theta squared because it is kind of a mess, kind of a pain having to write these parentheses all the time, then there's, uh, we have the shorthand notation, cosine squared of theta. Okay? So if you write it like this, put the square on the cosine. So it's kind of a goofy notation, um, but you know, it is what it is, and it's helpful because it lets us drop the parentheses. So if you're trying to say this, cosine of theta, and then quantity squared, um, write it like this, cosine squared of theta. So put the squared on the cosine. Okay? So then this would actually be written cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals 1. Okay, so we talked about this with cosines, but it's true for all six of the trig functions. Sine, cosine, secant, tangent, cotangent, uh, cosecant. It's true for all six of them. Okay, so cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals 1. And this is actually our first Pythagorean identity right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down that uh, identity. So the identity is cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals 1. And uh, this is probably one of the most important identities in all of math. 
Uh, so if you only remember one thing from Trig for the rest of your life, it really ought to be this identity. Uh, in fact, if you only remember one thing from anything at all ever for the rest of your life, uh, it should be this identity. Okay? So, um, and just remember, be very careful with the notation here. If you're trying to say this, uh, just say this, because you can draw the parentheses, it'll be easier that way. But don't say this, because this means this. And it's not the same thing. Be very careful about that. Okay. All right, so this is one of the Pythagorean identities. So as long as you remember this one, and just remember some basic algebra techniques, uh, you can get the other two. So let's go ahead and do that. So, um, now we could use this equation also. Uh, so here, we divided both sides by c squared. Now what we could do instead is divide both sides by a squared, and then do the same kind of thing here, or divide both sides by uh, b squared, and do the same kind of thing, and that'll give us the other two. But let's, uh, let's use this equation. Um, so uh, we're gonna use this equation, or this identity, to get the other two. Because that way we don't have to worry about right triangles anymore. Okay? So it'll be a little bit easier that way. So there's three Pythagorean identities. As long as you remember one of them, you can get the other two. And it's definitely best to remember this one, because it is uh, by far the most important. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we don't need this anymore. All right, so let's start with this uh, identity up here, and then we're going to say cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta uh, equals 1. So we're going to start with that. Now, let's divide both sides. So we'll zoom in a bit also. Let's divide both sides by the cosine squared of theta. Cosine squared of theta. Okay. Now, um, it might not be necessary, but it's good to see all the details. So we're going to go through every little detail of this step here, um, or all these steps. So first, we split this up into two fractions on the left side. So that's going to be cosine squared of theta divided by cosine squared of theta. And then we're going to add sine squared of theta um, over cosine squared of theta. OK? So all we did was just take the left-hand side and split it up into two fractions. So cosine squared over cosine squared plus plus sine squared over cosine squared. And then on the right-hand side, now what I want to do over here, um, let's leave it like that for now. 1 over cosine squared of theta. We'll just do it all together. OK, so now next step, cosine squared divided by cosine squared uh, is 1. So if you divide a thing by itself, you just get 1. Now what about over here? Well, sine squared of theta and cosine squared of theta, remember from our discussion earlier, uh, that's the same thing as saying sine of theta quantity squared and then cosine of theta quantity squared. Okay. Likewise, uh, this is the same thing as cosine of theta quantity squared. But again, you've got to have these parentheses here, okay? You've got to be very careful. You've got to have those parentheses. Okay, uh, next, uh, this is the same thing as saying, so remember how, um, so let's come down here a little bit. Remember how a over b quantity squared is the same thing as uh, a squared over b squared Okay. And it's true the other way, of course. So if you have a squared over b squared, it's the same thing as a over b quantity squared. Well, here we have sines and cosines, but it's exactly the same thing. Okay, it doesn't matter what a and b are, this, uh, this equality is going to hold true. Um, as long as you're not dividing by zero, but you know we don't want to get too nitpicky here. Um, but anyway, a thing squared divided by another thing squared. So we could say that's uh, sine of theta over cosine of theta, and then squared. Okay. So a thing squared divided by another thing squared, well, you can divide the things first and then square the result. Okay. So that's all this uh, thing here says. So we've used this before. Um, it is one of the basic algebraic uh, techniques there, just an arithmetic thing, really. All right, now what about over here? Um, well, 1 is the same thing as 1 squared, right? So if you just square 1, uh, or if you square 1, you're just going to get 1. So 1 and 1 squared are the same thing. So it's okay to do this because it uh, changes nothing. And then this is the same thing as this. Okay. So again, 1 and 1 squared are the same thing, so we can just tack on a square there, that's okay. Now we're going to use that same uh, fact that we used to rewrite this. So sine of theta quantity squared over cosine of theta quantity squared is the same thing as this. And then likewise, 1 squared over cosine of theta quantity squared is the same thing as this. All right. Now, um, what is sine of theta over cosine of theta? It's the tangent of theta, right? So that's one of the quotient identities that we talked about in the last video. Okay. And again, uh, be very careful with the parentheses here. 
Okay, uh, we don't do not want to say this. Okay, do not drop the parentheses. Do not say that because that's not the same thing. So remember that from our discussion earlier in this video. Uh, be very careful about that. Similarly, uh, one over the cosine of theta. So that's the reciprocal of the cosine of theta, which is the secant of theta. Okay. And don't forget uh, parentheses and squared. Okay. Now, um, and again, we don't really like writing this with the parentheses, so let's go ahead and drop that, and we got to make sure to put the squared on the tangent. So this is 1 plus tangent squared of theta equals uh, secant squared of theta. Okay. So this is our second Pythagorean identity here. 1 plus the tangent squared of theta equals the secant squared of theta. Okay. So let's come over here and write that. So the second Pythagorean uh, identity is 1 plus the tangent squared of theta equals the secant squared of theta. Okay. Now there is one more. Okay, so if you remember this first identity here, just divide both sides by cosine squared, do a little bit of algebra, you'll get this identity here. Okay. So let's uh, zoom out and recap what we did here. So we started with the first Pythagorean identity, divided both sides by cosine squared, split it up into two fractions, simplified cosine squared over cosine squared is 1, then we uh, rewrote the sine squared, so we, use, uh, we rewrote the shorthand notation uh, using the longer notation with parentheses, then we use the fact that if you square on top and square on bottom and you're dividing, then you can divide first and then square. Okay, so in other words, we use the fact that a squared over b squared is the same thing as a over b quantity squared, okay, uh, no matter what a and b are. Um, so uh, we did the same thing on the right-hand side also. So uh, then we use the fact that sine of theta over cosine of theta is the tangent, and then 1 plus tangent of theta quantity squared is the same thing as the secant of theta, uh, quantity squared over here. So then uh, tangent of theta quantity squared is tan squared of theta. So if we drop these parentheses, use the shorthand notation again, um, then we have this on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side we have secant squared of theta. Okay. So it's a lot of details we're showing here, but really um, we could say it in a shorter way. So here we showed a lot of details here to establish the fact that sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared, right? So remember, uh, sine of theta over cosine of theta equals tangent of theta. Okay. Well, it's true even if everything's being squared. So sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta equals tangent squared of theta. That's true. Um, zoom in a little bit here. And it's not true just for sine and cosine and tangent and their squares, right? It's true also, so you could say like sine uh, to the fifth power theta over cosine to the fifth power theta equals tangent to the fifth power theta, right? And so on and so forth. So this is sine of theta quantity to the fifth, cosine of theta quantity to the fifth, and tangent of theta quantity to the fifth. So even though the quotient identity just says sine of theta over cosine of theta equals tangent of theta, uh, it's true for powers of these functions also, so as long as they all have the same power. So this is like sine to the first, cosine to the first, tangent to the first, sine to the second, cosine to the second, tangent to the second, sine to the fifth, cosine to the fifth, tangent to the fifth, uh, and so on and so forth. So just keep that in mind. Um, okay, so now let's get the third Pythagorean identity. So we're going to do it pretty much the same way we got the second identity, but instead of dividing by cosine squared, we're going to divide by sine squared. Um, and we're not going to go through as much of the details, so if you want, you could fill those in on your own, it's good practice, but we're just going to use the fact uh, that we just talked about down here, um, that, you know, we're going to use these uh, quotient identities and the fact that even if we have powers of the functions, it still holds true. So we're going to start with that first Pythagorean identity and go through similar steps. Okay, so cosine squared plus sine squared uh, of theta equals 1, so we're going to start with that. So we're starting with this identity here. Now, before we divide both sides by cosine squared, now let's divide both sides by sine squared of theta. And again, we won't go through as many of the details, because they're uh, pretty much all the same. They're all exactly the same, really. So first, split it up into two fractions. Cosine squared of theta over sine squared of theta, uh, plus sine squared of theta over sine squared of theta. And then on the right-hand side, um, 1 divided by the sine squared, well we know 1 over sine of theta 
1 over sine of theta is the cosecant of theta, right? So that means 1 over sine squared of theta is the cosecant squared of theta. Okay? So this is just a shorter way of discussing what we talked about um, a few minutes ago. So this is just the cosecant squared of theta on the right-hand side. Okay? All right, now um, let's simplify some of this. So cosine squared of theta over sine squared of theta, well, we know that cosine of theta over sine of theta is the cotangent of theta, right? So we know that. That's uh, the other quotient identity we talked about. So the same thing is true if we square everything. Cosine squared of theta over sine squared of theta is cotangent squared of theta. Okay. So um, we can use this fact now to rewrite cosine squared over sine squared as cotangent squared. So now this is a cotangent squared of theta plus sine squared of theta over sine squared of theta is just one, and then this equals cosecant squared of theta. Okay. So uh, see how much simpler and uh, how shorter uh, how much shorter this is uh, when we don't show all the details. So if you, once you get comfortable with uh, dividing powers of trig functions like that, um, it really is pretty straightforward. It's not too bad. Just something to practice and get used to. It's, it's really not that bad at all. Um, okay, so this is our third Pythagorean identity. Cotangent squared of theta plus 1 equals cosecant squared of theta. And again, as long as you remember this first identity, you can divide both sides by sine squared to get this third identity. So that's uh, cotangent squared of theta plus 1 equals cosecant squared of theta. Okay, so just uh, remember that first identity. So remember this first identity. Divide both sides by cosine squared to get this one. Divide both sides of this by sine squared to get this one. Okay, so that's it for the Pythagorean identities. And again, they're all extremely important, especially this first one. Uh, one of the most important identities in all of math. Uh, if not the actual most important one. So we'll do some examples uh, in the next few videos.